there are six objective things any person can uh, look for when you're judging herb. Those six things, objective things in order, are basically onset. How long does it take? You know, I have a clock, I have a bong, I have my hit. I'm at a baseline state. What time is it? You know, three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. So you have either short onset or long onset. I prefer long onset. Um, stuff that takes a good hour to feel the full effect from 40 minutes to an hour. The second thing I look for is duration. It's again with a clock. How long after I consume it do I still sense it in my system? And again, I found that a um, quick onset is usually a short duration, whereas a slow onset is usually a long duration. The duration can be anywhere from 20 minutes to a half hour upwards of four or five hours. Um, longer than that for some strains as well. Um, the third thing is ceiling, and that refers to the more I smoke of it, the greater the experience is expanding. Again, a heavy hitting indica, two, three hits, all I'm going to get is more red eye, more sunk in the couch. It's really not going to get me any farther. Whereas a soaring sativa, you know, 14 bong hits into it, it's like LSD. It's, I, I couldn't grab the bong. It was, and, and make you laugh, it was just so insanely uh, ridiculous. Um, so, okay, onset duration, ceiling, and then this fourth one I think is one of the really important ones is tolerance threshold, burnout. And that takes six months worth of testing, morning, afternoon, and evening, and night. I mean, the whole gauntlet of... Uh, ways to consume it, you have to do this over a six-month period to determine whether or not it has a burnout effect. I think certain strains that are very popular right now, like the OGs and uh, the cheeses, those types of things, cookies, have this uh, very low or no tolerance threshold. Uh, so that's a very important one to look for. And it then couples in with the fifth aspect, which is shelf life. And certain flower has a six-month to a year shelf life. Again, usually the heavy-hitting indicas. Whereas a properly cured soaring sativa, well, my favorite smoke right now is my own Vanaluna, cured for two and a half to three years in glass. Uh, it just brings out characteristics. It's the closest thing I've smoked to Highland Thai um, is this two and a half, three-year cured. Now, this is in standard glass. There is a, a cutoff at about two and a half, three years where you start to lose a lot of potency at that uh, point in time. And then sixth and finally is, is just overall potency. And overall potency, I think, is where people get lost. Um, I, I have dealt with a number of individuals through the years online, you know, posting their grow reports and their, you know, doing their home crosses and whatnot claiming to have improved the blueberry. They improved the blueberry. And I'm curious, well, how? how? What did you do? So, well, when it boiled down to it, what they did was made it more potent. And potency was not the only thing um, I was testing for. Uh, and there's a term I coined called bland potency to refer to this phenomenon. And, you know, I have to, again, kind of a disclaimer. First of all, potency, be it bland or not, it's the first reward of the novice grower. When you grow your first crop that has the icky sticky, it doesn't matter if it's couch lock, you grew it, you made it, you're happy with it. Um, second factor that goes into this is that it's very easy to replicate. All you need is a very potent male and a very potent female, and we're seeing THC levels now 25 plus percent which uh, we, we need to standardize our testing as well. I think there's a discrepancy in that capacity where we're only testing the most concentrated parts of the flower, when in reality we should be grinding the whole plant um, and just sampling that powder plant next to plant to determine that uh, cannabinoid content. Comparing it to the wine and spirits industry, you know, you can go and buy Mad Dog, or Thunderbird, a fortified wine, you know, 20, 25% alcohol. Um, or you can get a fine bottle of Merlot. There's markets for both. 
Okay. I'm more interested in the fine bottle of Merlot. I'm not just drinking that wine to get drunk. I want more out of that experience uh, than, than just the drinking. Now, unfortunately, wine doesn't have as many variables to its effect as cannabis does. All wine really has going for it are the flavonoids, the flavors uh, that come through with that, the texture of it, what, what, whatever it is, does it have legs. Whereas with, with cannabis, we have stimulants, sedative, you know, the whole up-down, um, opening, closing, constrictive, dilating, uh, all of these uh, dichotomous, is that a word, effects. Um, so there's a whole lot more going on. Um, so that's what I mean by uh, the effect of the finished product. And that's strictly what we want to go by. There's no shortcut to determining a plant's uh, desirability and quality other than growing it to maturity properly, harvesting and curing it and consuming it over, you know, many months. Too many people go by what the plant looks like, what color it is, what it smells like, what it tastes like. Smell and taste are important, but that effect is the most important aspect to consider. That's what I'm trying to replicate uh, when I'm trying to replicate the Highland Oaxacan um, or the Highland Thai is, is this, this effect, this sense of well-being. It's, it's a good feeling. It's, it's not stupefying. And I also need to you know, make a disclaimer at this point that it's a point of personal preference what a person wants from cannabis. Like, for example, I'm not a big fan of heavy-hitting narcotic sedate indicas. But some people may be. I love the cannabis plant. She's my angel. She's, you know, my, my ally. 